Life as we know it couldn't exist on the surface of Pluto. It's too cold. But if tholins are getting cycled down into the guts of the planet, they could be transported to the areas where ice melts into liquid water. And it's just possible. The chemical evolution of these simple organic molecules could continue there, driven by Pluto's meager heat. And maybe, just maybe, the machinery for simple life could assemble in the subsurface oceans of Pluto, just like it probably did in the deep oceans of Earth four billion years ago. I'm intrigued by the possibilities that the sphere of life around our sun may extend f much further away from the sun than we ever dreamed possible. So, you know, could there be life on Pluto or, or under the surface of Pluto? I couldn't say no to that at the moment. Um, it's an intriguing possibility. Could there be life on Pluto? I don't think so. That's my own personal opinion. You know what? You can take flour and butter and eggs and chocolate chips and shake them all up and throw them in an oven. You may not get a cookie. What you're probably going to get is a glop. You're going to get a mess. While scientists debate the stunning possibility of life three billion miles from the sun, New Horizons turns its attention to Pluto's tiny moons. Mission scientists knew that Pluto most likely had five companion worlds. But nobody could have predicted just how plain weird these moons would turn out to be. When New Horizons arrived at Pluto, scientists held their breath, eager to see what Pluto's moons would turn out to be like. We knew nothing about them. So everything, literally, that we found out about these moons was going to be for the first time, and it was going to be a surprise. Three years before New Horizons arrived at Pluto, the Hubble Space Telescope imaged five moons around the dwarf planet. One oversized moon called Charon and four much smaller icy companions. New Horizons was reprogrammed to study these worlds and to discover any additional moons too small for Hubble to pick out. You know, before the flyby, one of the things that we surveyed people about was how many more moons would we find? And some guessed dozens, and some guessed a few more. Uh, and one of our top team members uh, guessed zero. And I remember going to him and saying, I'll take that bet. I'll bet you a dinner anywhere in the United States that we will find at least one. Stern lost his bet. New Horizons confirmed Hubble had seen all there was to see. But what incredible worlds Pluto's five moons turned out to be. Oversized Charon was revealed alongside Styx, Nix, Kerberos, and Hydra. Four tiny ice moons, each less than 25 miles across. And they were unlike any moons astronomers had seen before. These objects are spinning crazy fast compared to what we expected. Um, not only that, but instead of having their poles aligned with Pluto's pole like this, they're actually spinning on their side, so they're sort of going around like this. Totally crazy behavior that we had no expectation of. To understand these crazy orbits, scientists find clues in the early history of the Earth. In the early days of the formation of the Kuiper Belt, these icy bodies were colliding with each other quite often. And just like here at the Earth, uh, where a large Mars-sized protoplanet actually collided with the Earth to form our Earth-Moon system, that's probably what happened at Pluto as well. Pluto most likely took a giant hit in its youth. And its moons are the leftovers from this mammoth collision. Giant Charon settled into a close spinning orbit with Pluto. And farther out, the four tiny moons orbit around both bodies like tumbling shards of icy shrapnel. The first images of oversized Charon show a gray, dead world pockmarked with the scars of its violent past. The biggest scar is huge. It appears to almost split the moon in two. Charon is uh, a mess. Uh, the first thing I thought of when I looked at that 
picture that we got in high resolution. It's like, this is Frankenstein's moon. This looks like a moon that somebody basically took a hammer and chisel to and broke it completely apart and then just mashed it back together. But what has the power to split a Texas-sized moon like Charon apart? In the frozen wastelands of the outer solar system, scientists are left with only one option, water. Four billion years ago, Charon probably had an internal liquid ocean, just like Pluto today. But because Charon is smaller, it cooled more quickly. The entire ocean turned to ice, and poor Charon burst at the seams. If you take a soda can and put it in the freezer, when the water in that soda freezes, it expands, but the metal of the can won't. And so what happens is it gets under more and more stress, more and more pressure, until it ruptures and it splits open and that stuff oozes out. This, the, the, this system of, of canyons and faults across uh, the equator of Sharon really sort of represent that, that last gasp of geologic activity as it, it sort of you know, spilled its guts out as the interior ice froze um, and, and you know, on its way to becoming a, a dead world. So it was, it, was, it was Sharon's last gasp, if you will. Charon's red-stained polar cap also catches the eye of mission scientists. They name it Mordor. And this barren, red-painted terrain presents the team with perhaps their greatest challenge. Of all the surprising things on Charon, and it's a long list, probably the most surprising thing is Mordor. I love that. This is the north polar region of Charon, and for some reason, it is red. It's covered in some sort of red substance. We think this is probably a tholin. It's a complex organic molecule. Mordor appears covered with tholins, but how? This frozen world doesn't have the ingredients or the atmosphere to make complex organic molecules. The tholins must be coming to Charon pre-made. But from where? The only logical answer is from Pluto, over 10,000 miles away. How would it get from being made on Pluto to getting to Charon? And really, nobody's sure. But the thinking is that somehow this stuff is getting into the atmosphere of Pluto and being transferred that way through space to basically be deposited on the North Pole of Charon. How that works is something uh, I don't think anybody understands. Uh, and that's, that's cool, because there are a lot of mysteries left and a lot of studying to be done, uh, even with all of the, the data we have. There are still many questions to answer, but we now have a handle on how Pluto works, and that's allowed scientists to imagine the future of this frozen world. Incredibly, Pluto may be about to awaken from a deep, cold slumber.